Hey everyone, uh, my name is Chef Travis Hansen. I'm the second year culinary instructor at Hibbing Community College. Uh, normally this time of year I come out and visit you guys at the school or go out recruiting to different programs. Uh, but of course this year I can't get out so I'm coming to you in social media. So I wanted to do a quick demo on uh, schmores and to drop a graham cracker. Get a graham cracker, gauntlet, graham cracker, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Thanos. <laughs> My lovely teenager. <laughs> so, what we're going to do today is I'm going to challenge you to do your best schmore impression. Whether it be graham crackers, uh, I'll give you a couple ideas at the end. Whether you use chocolate, uh, peanut butter cups, cookie and cream bar, that kind of stuff. I want to see your best schmore impression. Now what you're going to need to do is look up Hibbing Community College Culinary Arts Facebook page. You're going to need to like, share, and post a picture of your best schmore onto that post. So follow the link back to the video and I hope to see you guys soon. Alright, let's get started on our marshmallows. So first step that we're going to do is we're going to take some powdered gelatin and we're going to take our water, our half a cup of water, and we're going to bloom our gelatin. For the sake of this video, I pre-bloomed my gelatin. This has been blooming for about 10 minutes. Bloom, what blooming is, is powder or the gelatin comes in a powder and you got to add water to it to activate the gelatin. So blooming is actually the act or the action of the gelatin soaking up the water. So we gotta make sure that we have our gelatin blooming. I'm just gonna put this on here. We don't have to do anything with it yet. Um, you're gonna need either a stand mixer or a hand mixer. Electric hand mixer works just as well. So we're gonna add our water to our pan. Our corn syrup, this is a half a cup of water, a quarter cup of corn syrup. And we're just going to fire this up. So to do this, you're going to need a pot, a mixer, some sort of heat, whether it be a stove or a burner like this, I do. I would normally do it on my stove, but I want to keep it centered. Um, you're going to need some sort of a candy thermometer. I've just got a um, just instant read thermometer. You can get these at Walmart or Target, anything like that. And you're going to need a spatula and then a whisk attachment for your mixer. Now as we're waiting for this to heat up, I'm going to kind of go through just a little bit of what we can do with marshmallows and how we can flavor. So over here I've got some of our flavorings. Today I'm going to use a vanilla paste. And this is just a really um, a thickened vanilla uh, extract. And then it's got vanilla, seed, or vanilla beans ground up and added to it so you get the look of the vanilla uh, bean. You can use just regular vanilla extract, whether it be pure vanilla or imitation. Uh, so I got strawberry extract here, lemon. Uh, if you like chocolate peppermint mixture, that's really good to mix the two of them for your schmore. All right, so now we got our corn syrup and water up to a boil. Now I'm just gonna carefully add my sugar and this is 14 and a half ounces. Move these over here just in the middle of the room. Then I'm just really carefully going to mix this up. All I want to do is make sure that the sugar is dissolved. I don't want to spread. Oh, thank you. My production assistant reminded me that I don't have my glasses on. So, much better, the world's now clear. But you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of sugar around the rim of the pot. 
Otherwise, when you go to pour it into the mixer, it's gonna pull those sugar crystals into your marshmallow and that sugar could re-crystallize. And we don't want crystallization in there, otherwise you're gonna have a crunchy marshmallow. It's gonna be gritty tasty. So we're just gonna give this a light stir. We don't want it to burn. And we're gonna cook this up to 245 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why the thermometer comes in. So I'm actually gonna stop the video here and I'm gonna get, let this come up to a boil because as you know, watch pots never boil. So I'll be right back. Begin your educational path at Hibbing Community College. With over 20 different career programs available, an AA degree or a jump start to your bachelor's degree, we don't just want you to sign up, we want you to graduate and improve your life. Our programs are hands-on, our small class sizes and friendly knowledgeable instructors guide you to a career that works. Find out more at www.hibbing.edu. Hibbing Community College. Your future starts here. All right, so we're gonna boil here. I'm just gonna take and wipe down the edge of my pot here, and we're just about at temp. All I've got here is just some cold water, a pastry brush, wipe down the edges so that I don't get any sugar in, or sugar crystals. I'm just gonna very carefully take and temp this. And we're at, no, we're a little over, so but that's all right. We're a degree over. Drop. Now, very carefully, we're going to turn off our heat. Once this stops boiling, it's going to stop bubbling totally. Then we can add it to our mixer. I'm going to take and just scrape my gelatin off the bottom and kind of just bust it up a little bit. That way it just doesn't stick right on the bottom and I've got all that gelatin that the uh, syrup is just going right over. All right, so as you can see in here, I got just a couple little places that it's still bubbling. Don't set this on your counter, on your regular counter like this. The reason I can do this on this is it's stainless steel. So it's not gonna melt. Your regular counters are actually gonna melt or burn if you put it from the um, stove top onto your countertop. Make sure you just leave it right on the um, range top. So now we got, we got bubbles in here yet, but it's not boiling. So we're gonna start up our mixer. Now, as we pour this in, we wanna make sure we pour it right down the inside lip of the mixing bowl. We don't want it splattering around. I'm just going to pour it real slowly and be very careful. Make sure you have your parents' help on this. Because this is very hot.
Alright, so that's all there is to our dusting powder. So as this is coming up, I'm just going to slow down my mixer a little bit. I'm going to add my vanilla or whatever extract I'm using. That's about it. Roughly a teaspoon. I'm going to shut this off just for a second. I'm just going to scrape off the rest of my vanilla paste. become a real tough marshmallow. As you can see it's nice and gooey. It should have just a, a soft peak to it where basically this little tail here is going to round off as it's lifted over. It's going to curl over. If it was a stiff peak it would be straight up in there. Here's another little trick that you can do when you're making these and you're going to pour them out of your pan, take a little bit of canola oil, a little bit of butter on your spatula will work too, just a shot of it. Now I always like to make sure that I clean off my um, uh, whisk or whatever attachment I'm using because there's a lot of material that, or marshmallow in this case, that you're going to lose if you don't clean this off just a little bit. Or you could save it till later and eat the marshmallow off of it. So now we're going to put this into our prepared pans. And this might fit all into one. I just prepared two to be on the safe side because I haven't done them in these, this size of tins. fast. Then we'll just put the rest in the other one. It won't be much, but it'll be enough to satisfy our sweet tooth. Like I said, you do have to work a little bit fast because it's starting to cool in the pot now and it's a nice gooey gooey mess. Right. Now to finish this off, we're gonna take we're gonna take our you can do this by hand, just dust it over, you're gonna shake it off later. But I like to put just a little bit in here and then just right around and dust over the top. 
same thing on this one. And it, you can put as little or as much as you want on these. Um, we're gonna shake off the rest after it gets done resting. It's gotta rest for about six hours. So after it gets done resting, it'll you can just take and tip it right over and it'll go right into this mixing bowl or into this bowl. So we're gonna clean up our station, we're gonna let these rest for six hours and we'll be back when we get done and I'll show you how to unmold them and how to cut them. Our culinary program has been in existence since 1965. One of the best benefits of going to a culinary school like ours is that you are going to advance much faster than if you were trying to work your way up through the industry. The instructors are very friendly, um, very helpful. We would love to have you. If you want to work in a busy, a fast-paced, exciting environment, culinary arts would be the program for you. All right, we're back. It's been six hours since we've panned up our marshmallows. So now all you want to do is make sure, like if you do this in a, not an aluminum pan, just make sure that it's free around the edges. We're going to take and kind of shake off some of our excess dusting powder here. Right. Tip it over onto our pan. Remember to peel off your parchment. You don't want to be eating that. All right, so we got our marshmallows here. Now all we're gonna do is just real lightly give our knife just a little spray. Just so, I don't know if you guys have ever tried cutting marshmallows, but they don't cut too easily with out having stick into your knife. It's still gonna stick a little bit. can see it too well but if you look right in here you can see all the little um like vanilla bean seeds that's why i use the vanilla paste it just gives it a little bit of extra so now i'm going to take and i'm going to cut these into my squares And then I'm going to take my squares and I'm going to toss them in my dusting powder here. And then I'm going to put them into a, a little strainer. Give them just a little bit of toss to knock off the excess. I'm just going to put them in here. And that's the way we get the marshmallows so they don't stick to one another. I'm going to do one more cut for you. And I like to do these so they're about the same size as what I'm putting them on. Now one of the things that I really like to do is I like to take some French bread and I toast off with just a little bit of cinnamon and sugar. So I want the uh, marshmallow to be about the same size as the French bread. So that's why it's about this big. My three pieces in. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put all these little end pieces in too. Toss them in my dusting powder. Sorry, my bird clock is going to town. This spring semester, my students have um, had to put up with that a lot because I do demos for their classes. I'm going to dust those off. Dust my hands off because it makes a mess. And let's try one of these little guys. These are a great treat, whether you're making s'mores, whether you just want a snack to have around. But I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to um, email me. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me now. 
I will put that in the credits at the end. So I hope to see you guys and talk to you soon. Hey everyone, I hope you guys or I hope you enjoyed the demo on the marshmallows. Remember, if you want to win some HCC swag, like, comment, and share, and one lucky winner will be drawn to win some uh, real sweet swag. So hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Keep an eye out for the future videos. We're going to be doing some more contests along the way. So if you don't win this one, we'll get you on the next one.